from the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. Police Commissioner Paul Roll yesterday pushed back against assertions that the Royal Bahamas Police Force is being used to carry out acts of political victimization, insisting, I do not take instructions from politicians. In the face of allegations, the police were acting on instructions from political higher-ups to detain and arrest Democratic National Alliance leader Arinthia Komalafi and members of her party. The commissioner was adamant yesterday that he alone instructed the central police station to act yesterday. The DNA's leader and other party officials were brought to the station yesterday for questioning in relation to a March 3rd protest and events that occurred later that day. They were released several hours later. Mr. Roll said he did not charge the DNA members on March 3rd, but made a decision to deal with the situation later. He said not only did the group unlawfully assemble at Rawson Square, but they pushed on officers in an attempt to gain entry into the House of Assembly. Asked why it took three weeks to act in this matter, Commissioner Roll said by law he is allowed a time frame of one year to take action where misdemeanors are concerned. A 55-year-old man became the country's latest murder victim after he was shot in the head and killed at his home on Wilson Track early yesterday morning. Police have not identified the victim, but family members said he is Carlos Bookie Brown, a father of two boys, a 6-year-old and a 15-year-old. His death has pushed the country's murder count to 28, according to the Tribune's records. Assistant Superintendent of Police Audley Peters said shortly after 5 a.m., police received reports of a shooting incident on Wilson Track off of Wolf Road. Upon arrival, officers were led to a single-story home where they found a man lying in the doorway unresponsive. Paramedics were called but pronounced him dead at the scene. Police appealed to anyone with information to contact the nearest police station. SuperValue's principal yesterday urged Bahamians to pull out all the stops to help reopen the economy and become COVID-19 vaccinated with the supermarket chain's sales in free fall. Rupert Roberts told the Tribune that the supermarket chain's top line is falling every week as prolonged unemployment and or reduced incomes continue to inflict an ever deeper toll on consumer spending. Asserting that vaccination is 100% key to beating the pandemic and restoring the economy to some semblance of normal. Normalcy. He added that SuperValue and its quality supermarkets affiliate were booking appointments for all staff aged 65 and over to become inoculated against COVID-19. Officials at Bahamar say things are definitely looking up for the resort as reservation numbers for Easter and spring break are exceeding those of 2019, with forward bookings for summer, fall and winter also looking good. Bahamar, like other resorts in the Bahamas, had to close its doors and furlough staff when COVID-19 travel restrictions came into play. It was one of the first resorts to reopen and take back staff when the country's borders were open again to visitors. The resort is now experiencing what appears to be a steady flow of guests. Yes. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, police on Tuesday identified a 21-year-old man as the suspect who opened fire inside a crowded Colorado supermarket, and court documents showed that he purchased an assault rifle less than a week before the attack that killed 10 people, including a police officer. Supermarket employees told investigators that Ahmad al alawi Alyssa shot an elderly man multiple times outside the Boulder grocery store before going inside, according to the documents. Another person was shot in a vehicle next to a car registered to the suspect suspect's brother. The documents did not say where the gun was purchased. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was fighting for his political survival today as the country held its fourth parliamentary election in two years. The election is widely seen as a referendum on Netanyahu's divisive rule, and once again, opinion polls are forecasting an extremely tight race. Exit polls were scheduled to be released by Israelis' three major TV stations after the end of voting at 10 p.m., but it could be several days before the true outcome of the race is known. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A weak pressure pattern will generate light to gentle breezes this afternoon as a high-pressure ridge gradually builds in across the area through tonight. Beachgoers in the northwest Bahamas should exercise caution due to the slight risk of rip currents along Atlantic-exposed shorelines due to the presence of lingering swells. For all areas, it'll be partly sunny to sunny and warm with a few lingering showers, mainly across the central and southeast Bahamas this afternoon. 
becoming mostly fair and mild with a stray shower or two possible tonight. A small craft caution remains in effect for the northwest Bahamas due to swells this afternoon. Winds variable at 10 knots or less this afternoon, becoming east to southeast at 10 to 15 knots, occasionally falling light and variable tonight. Seas 1 to 3 feet near shore, but up to 6 feet along Atlantic exposed shorelines in light to moderate swells in the northwest Bahamas this afternoon, building 2 to 4 feet but slightly higher in subsiding swells across all areas. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 82 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 64. The sun will set at 721 and will rise to more morning at 709. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper, now on the streets, or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.